going to be our our third Great Issues lecture of the, the academic year, so a great place to, to have you here. Uh, we have a very exciting presentation today. Uh, professor Monique Bruner is a, a professor of political science here at Rose State, has um, you know stepped up to fill in for uh, Professor Rockmeyer. She, she wasn't able to uh, to attend today, but um, you know we, we're, we're looking forward to a really exciting presentation today. Uh, the title is Claim to Win, Rules for Women in a Man's World. And uh, I'd like for you to welcome <coughs> Professor Monique Bruner. Well, thank you. I'm not exactly sure how exciting it will be, but um, <laughs> let's go with that. Um, I am glad to be here this afternoon. And um, I am a really, um, I give sympathy to uh, Professor Brockmeyer, who's not able to be with us today. Um, she recently had a death in her family, and she also is, has been ill and has no voice. So um, she asked me to cover for her today. So I took her topic and made it mine. So hopefully <laughs> you guys will understand the flair that we have. Um, the title that we're covering, or the topic that we're covering today, covering today um, especially since it's March, which is Women's History Month, is Plan to Win, ru Rules for Women in a Man's World. And so my first question to you is, what exactly is a man's world? What does that mean? Business. Business? So if it's business oriented, it's just for men? Some men feel that way. Okay, what else? What is exactly this quote unquote man's world? Just us. It's just us. Like, <laughs> just us. <laughs> like, justice. <laughs> okay. Um, I was a little slow on that one. Yes, I mean, a lot of times when we think of this quote unquote man's world, we think of something that um, is like this good old boys club, maybe. And because I am not part of that particular gender or whatever, I'm not in that club. Professor Carey, did you have something that you wanted to add to that? Who makes the rules? Exactly. Who makes these rules? Who, who makes these rules? The man. <laughs> is it one man in particular or is it like, you know, like this ominous governmental figure, superhero, the man? It's all society. So it's some of these traditional standards I heard someone say. I mean, it's a lot of these things that we have. But as women, we have to try to break that mold. Um, and as we go through um, the presentation today, I'll show you just how far women have come. But then we will also look at some of the things that women have to continue to break through to make a difference. So. Um, from there, we will do a little background. Now, before I go to this next slide, I want to say that I am not a historian. I do not pretend to be. I teach political science. I do teach women's studies. <laughs> and I am a feminist. I am not, however, a historian. So, let's relax some. All right. We start off in the 1930s. In the 1930s, um, the Great Depression left about 12 million out of work. Many claimed that women were taking jobs from men. So um, during this time, we have a few ladies who kind of did something that was extraordinary. Amelia Earhart became the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. First Lady Eleanor Roosevelt holds a press conference allowing only women reporters to attend. Pretty interesting. Jane Addams becomes the first woman to win a Nobel Peace Prize for her work with the poor in Chicago. Frances Perkins is appointed to Secretary of Labor, becoming the first female U.S. cabinet member. Marian Anderson, who is up here, which I do apologize, we don't see her very, where's my... Well, she's in the top right-hand corner, Marian Anderson. She um, sings for the first time at the Lincoln Memorial with the help of Eleanor Roosevelt. She was the first African-American to do that. 
And then um, I figured we'd do a little film for our humanities colleagues. Um, the Wizard of Oz, st star starring uh, Judy Garland, uh, was the first color major film. So um, kind of interesting. So that was kind of 1930s. The 1940s, um, there was a huge media campaign featuring, featuring Rosie the Riveter, which is in the top right-hand corner with the arm up, we can do this. And this media campaign urges over six million women into the workforce. So in the 30s, they were saying we were taking men's jobs, but in the 40s, they really needed us to work those jobs. Um, and we did so, um, but with the ending of the World War II, they then encouraged us to go back home because we needed to care for the home and the family. Uh, women caring for the home and the family, do you think that's a traditional role or an untraditional role? Depends on the culture you're in. Um, but I think if you just were stereotypically in the United States, you would say that caring for the home um, may be more of a traditional role. So it's interesting. Um, in the 1940s, there were lots of things that changed, though. Um, number one, the Women's Army Corps and the, and the Women's Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service was established. Um, this allowed women to serve in the U.S. Navy. But take heed to the names that were given. The Women's Army Corps, which is totally separate, and Women Accepted for Volunteer Emergency Service, very different. They also established the All-American Girls Professional ba Baseball League. Um, the United Nations was founded, and Eleanor Roosevelt was appointed as the U.S. delegate. So we owe a lot of homage to Eleanor Roosevelt, First Lady Roosevelt. Um, high jumper Alice Coachman becomes the first African-American woman to win an Olympic gold medal. Mildred Bay Dickerson and, uh, and other women create the Ladies Professional Golf Tour. So ladies got into golf in the 40s. Um, Ella Fitzgerald uh, begins her solo career as a leading jazz star. And I have her picture. That's her picture up there with the colorful, flowery kind of hat on. Um, and then the Andrews Sisters, which they're pictured at the bottom, um, they were a popular singing group um, during the war effort. And the song that you may be familiar that they sung was Boogie Woogie, Boogie, Woogie Bugle Boy. <laughs> And, oh, and the last one just died. How sad. So does anybody want to sing Boogie Woogie Bugle Boy? Okay, can you, can, we get, can you give us a verse? I don't know a verse. Okay, can you give us a snippet? Now you put me on the spot. Go ahead. You're good, though. <laughs> You look like her, that's good. <laughs> Say hands with the bugle. Okay. <laughs> All right, yay! Jazz hands. All right. So as we move from the 40s, we go to the 50s. And in the 50s, um, of course, we have um, the beginnings of a civil rights rumbling, right? And we have um, Rosa Parks who um, decided that she was too tired to give up her seat on the bus. And she is considered the mother of the civil rights movement. Um, this is also the height of the baby boom. And again, it's emphasis on women being encouraged to stay home to take care of the family. Um, in 1950, however, women make up 30% of those enrolled in college. Um, that's a 17% drop from 1920. So um, the college attendance for women went down, which I think is really interesting. When we look around, or if you look around your classes, and even if you look in here today, you see there is a num more, many more women here than men. Kind of interesting. Um, I'm sorry? Why did it go down? In the 20s to the 50s? It went down, um, well, in the 20s, that was pre-depression. It was pre-war. Um, women, they really weren't in the workforce. So where else could a, what else could a woman whose family had money, what else could they do? That would be go to college. But after all of that, you come to the 50s, it's not as much money. And it's just kind of tempted to just stay at home more than to really get out. 
It's kind of interesting. Um, Jacqueline Cochran became the first woman to break the sound barrier. Um, Athea Gibson is the first African American to win the All England title in tennis at Wilmington. Betty Davis, um, who she's pictured there too, um, is probably one of my favorite older movie stars. Um, but Betty Davis kind of takes Hollywood by storm during this time with her stunning movie roles. And then the I Love Lucy show, starring Lucille Ball, uh, makes uh, Lucille Ball a prominent comedian during the time. Do you all remember the I Love Lucy show? Do you know the theme to the I Love Lucy? No? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. You're better than me, because I, I don't remember that much. All right, so um, from the 50s, we go to the 1960s. The 1960s, um, things are really shaken up. We have a sexual revolution. We have a exploration revolution as far as, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Um, Eleanor Roosevelt chairs President um, um, Kennedy's Commission on the Status of Women. So we finally have a president that says women are important. Let's try to do some studies. Wilma, Ra R Wilma Rudolph sets a new world record in the 100 meter dash. Um, ecologist Rachel, Rachel Carson wrote a book called Silent Spring, which is the beginning of the environmental movement. And many people today, when we think of the environmental movement, a lot of us um, attach that with Al Gore. But even many, many years before him in the 60s, we had a revolutionary. Um, who uh, wrote about the things we were doing to our environment way back in the 60s. Um, during this time, 43% 40 per, of women are in the workforce, which makes up, um, which is up more than 25% from the 1940s. So we do have more women enter, entering into the workforce in the 60s. Um, and over 30% of those who are married begin to work outside the home. Um, 30% of women who are married <coughs> begin to work outside the home. Um, Congress passes the Equal Pay Act, which is the first federal law prohibiting sexual discrimination. Um, Betty Friedman's um, book, The Feminine Mystique, is published, launching the modern women's, day, women's movement in the United States. Um, we have uh, the Civil Rights Act is passed, which bans discrimination on the basis of color, race, national origin. Um, and Shirley Chisholm of New York City becomes the first African-American woman elected to Congress. Um, and then I also have Audrey, Audrey Hepburn on here um, as a fashion icon in the classic movie, um, Tiffany, Breakfast at Tiffany's. So the 1960s, you really get to see a lot of change. But it was in the 70s that you begin to see um, revolution. It was in the 70s that the revolution began to be ex vastly televised. It was in the 70s that um, we had national demonstrations and women burned their bras in the streets. And we kind of stood up and said, we are here. We aren't going anywhere. So the equal rights movement gains momentum. This was mostly on college campuses. Um, again, where, in, where the enrollment of women was over 60%, 60%. And now, that's remarkable. From the 50s to the 70s, how much women began to go to college. So, and it was um, in 1979, you, you had the first time where more women were entering college than men. So, um, very interesting. The 70s were a big change. Labor organizer Dolores Hutera um, becomes the first vice president of the United Farms Workers, where she co-founded to help immigrant and migrant people. The National Women's Political Caucus was founded in Washington, D.C. Um, the Gloria Steinman helped launch the first issue of Miss Magazine. Um, those of you all who are not familiar, Miss Magazine is the one magazine that gives women's issues. Um, with, with a disregard for what the political ramifications may be. So um, it's, pretty, it's a pretty interesting magazine. Um, if you subscribe to their site, um, you can actually view and read all of the past magazines. And it's really reasonable if you're a student. 
The United States Supreme Court decision, Roe v. Wade, guarantees a woman's right to abortion, um, which was pivotal. Um, in the 70s, many women were dying because of botched abortions, and this brought a huge change um, in freedom to women who wanted to make that choice. Tennis champion Billie Jean King defeats Bobby Riggs in the Battle of Sexes. Does anybody remember that? Okay. I can't say that I do, but I'm glad that you all do. <laughs> I watched it on film. Um, Little League Baseball is open to girls. Women were admitted to the U.S. military academies for the first time. There were nearly 100,000 demonstrators marched in Washington, D.C. in support of ERA. And the Women's Army Corps is dismantled as women are now integrated into the United States Army. So um, when we look at things, especially politically, we look at the military. When the military makes a change, um, the um, uh, corporate America generally makes that same change in four to five years, which you see in the 80s. So in the 80s, we begin to see some new things. So there are new guidelines for Equal Opportunity um, Commission that help to pro that prohibit sexual harassment. Um, Sandra Day O'Connor is named the first woman on the Supreme Court. Um, ERA expires, or actually it did not pass because it fell by the lack of voting votes from three states. It was three states short to reach the amendment. Um, Sally Ride became the first U.S. woman to go to space. Geraldine Fiaro, thank you, became the first woman nominated by a major political party to run for vice president of the United States. And then in 1986, more than 50% of all college graduates were women. And with 50% of women earning graduate, degree, graduate degrees, which is humongous, so a graduate degree would be a master's degree um, a, 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 or a doctorate degree, and then when you have professional degrees like medical um, degrees, dentist, um, law school, 30% of women were getting those, earning those degrees. So um, education in the 80s really expand, expanded. Florence Griffin Joyner set a world record in the 200 meter sprint at the Olympics. Um, Oprah Winfrey, which we all know Oprah Winfrey, um, her show went national in 1986 and she soon became the most influential female in the media. Oprah Winfrey, um, as we know today, is the first female to own a uh, television network. Um, Toni Morrison, who is up at the top um, right hand corner, um, in 1988 she received a Pulitzer Prize for her book Beloved. So um, the 90s, which is actually an era that I am very familiar with, <laughs> the late 90s that is, I'm just kidding. Um, but the 90s, 60% um, of women work outside the home and make up over 50% of the workforce, um, which is interesting. Uh, by 1997, women earn 40% of medical law and doctor degrees. Um, the U.S. Department of Labor establishes the Glass Ceiling Commission to eliminate the barriers to block qualified women from advancements in the workplace. Um, young girls are introduced to the, work, to the workplace with the Ms. Uh, Foundation Take Your Daughter to Work Day. Um, the Vietnam Women's Memorial is er erected in Washington, D.C. Social um, Supreme Court Justice Ruth Ginsburg and Attorney General Janet Reno were appointed. The beginning of the Violence Against Women's Act was passed to combat gender-based violent crimes. Madeleine Albright, who is here, um, is confirmed as the first woman U.S. Secretary of State. Um, it's the first time women, uh, a woman was pinned a three-star general, and that was um, Claudia, U.S. Army General Claudia Kennedy. And the Women's National Basketball Association, or the WNBA, debuted. So um, again, lots of changes. But then we come to present day, and we have some very unique icons within the last five years, women have come 
substantially to be equal or almost equal with men. Um, we have some women on the political scene that have changed the way that the world thinks. Um, of the 123 million women aged 16 and older in the United States, 72 million are in the workforce. 66 million were employed by the United States um, and 73% of employed women work full-time jobs while 27% work part-time jobs. Um, with this definite change, we see now that women have a place in the workforce. We see more minority women in the workforce today. Asian, um, African American um, are in the workforce um, about 46 to 34 percent um, accordingly, um, which is very different. But what now? That's where, that's where we were. That's where we have been. Um, are women equal now? No? Why not? We don't get paid as much? I mean, but we, I just, we just went through 70 years of history and, and we're still not there. So, huh? We can go to war. We can fly a fighter jet. We have a new female president coming on at Rose State College. Um, we have. Okay, so why is that? Why do women have to push hard? Well, you can't, you can't smoke at a restaurant, but I understand what you're saying. Okay. So, but has anyone in here pushed the limit to get women equal footing? You voted? Okay. All right. I'll go with that. Because there were times where women were discouraged from voting, where maybe your husband did not allow you to. There were times when women were considered property and we, they didn't believe we were smart enough to vote. So that is a change that we have. But what else? Anybody else take a step where they made a difference? You made a difference? Well, I was thinking part of my reason. When you're working at a job and you have children, when you first have children, I had a problem. I had to quit my job because I was a drug fiend. And I had, I had a husband on bringing to me twice a day. So I mean, you know, there has to be adjustments for some women in the workplace. And until that happens with every job, it's hard for us to, to work a job and say, Okay. So you're saying there are different standards for when a man has a child and a woman has a child. Because a woman has, a, has many times, women have more of a sense of responsibility for the child. So you and you have to take time off. You have to physically get better um, after a major physical incident. And, you know, I agree. I agree. But there are some things. No one mentioned um, getting more education for themselves. No one has mentioned um, trying to seek leadership education and opportunities. Nobody has mentioned pushing the box for themselves as a female to learn and do something different annually or every quarter or, you know, doing something different. Did you have something? Okay, so um, what I hear you saying is that 
the, it's a generational difference. So women from an old, older generation sometimes didn't always feel that they had those opportunities available. And today, with the younger generation, with technology, with seeing how history was over time, they know now that they have these opportunities available for them, and so they're more likely to, to use or to work or to act on those opportunities. Okay. Yes. Okay, I think that um, you, uh, what my grandmother would say, hit the nail right on the head. So if we can take the experience of the older generation with this technological um, knowledge of the new generation, and we would actually work together and develop mentoring opportunities where you would take someone under your wing to say, hey, look, this is how it could be done. And then that younger person to say, you know what, we can do that. And with technology, we can take it another step further. further. So the next part of my, my presentation is more um, the take homes that you can take to really make a difference and change. So number one, play like a man, win like a woman. If you think about the game of football, so if you think about the game of football and seeing that I love football and I'm an OU fan, that's why I have this particular slide because yay Sooners. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, you would take this whole um, football strategy or this touchdown type strategy and you are there to win. So as a female, you need to realize that you come to play. You don't come just to observe. You come to play and win. You remember that the goal is to score and to help your team win. Um, a lot of times, I think female leaders are, um, get a bad rap because they, they try to help themselves get up there and they give the attitude of, I made it, you need to make it on your own. But just because you make it, you didn't make it on your own, so you need to help somebody else, it's a team. Um, you always need to keep your eye on the goal. So those of you all who are still in school and you are working and it is hard on you because you have a lot of things demanding of your time, been there, done that. But you have to keep your eye on the goal. This is where you want to be. Um, think of what that goal is. Write it down and then try to find someone who can help you. When the game is over, remember to shake hands. So at the end of the semester, maybe you had a faculty member who got on your last nerve. I understand. <laughs> if it was me, don't tell me. No, I'm just playing. Um, but shake hands at the end of it. And you don't ever want to burn your bridges. You want to keep them open. So remember to shake hands and be respectful. Um, now, this is where sometimes as females, we kind of get on the other side. You don't have to like all of your teammates, but you do need to be loyal. You do need to be respectful, and you do need to be cordial. And then the last thing under this particular scenario of football is you don't ever want to throw a teammate under the bus. Have y'all, are you familiar with that? Where you throw somebody under the bus and you just kind of leave them there and you trying to get what's yours. Um, if you are a true team member, you are going to step up when your team member is not able to do that and you're going to bear that load. All right. So are you suited up and ready to play? Again, I love OU, and it's just something about a uniform that is just magnificent. <laughs> anyway, but you have to know your playing field. So you cannot have the rules for chess and you're playing football. So know what field you're on. Know what game you're going to need to play. Know your opponents. So know what they like, what they don't like, what are their patterns of behavior, 
You know, do you need to come to work early? Do you need to stay to work late? What? Know who they are. Know your own weak spots. So you have to be honest with yourself to know where you need to improve. So for that, sometimes you have to ask somebody else. You have to have a really good friend who's going to be honest with you and going to say, oh, Monique, that did not work at all. <laughs> and you have to be like, okay, so what about it? Didn't work. And you have to be willing to change that. So know what your weaknesses are. Know your blind spots because a blind spot can be your undoing. Have you ever been driving in the car and you try to get over and then that person is honking at you and they are like road rage driving after you trying to really get you, but they were in your blind spot and you didn't see them? That's a great weakness. So know what those blind spots are. Know your team culture. So um, who is the captain in your department? Who is the captain on the PTA or your job or wherever you are? Who is that person? Know the lineup. Where do you fit in? And be realistic. You know, if you are the new person that was hired to the job, be realistic about, you know, what this quote unquote pecking order is so that you know where you are. Um, you want to pick your battles. You want to choose those battles wisely. Um, and you want to go in and you have your uniform on. And if that's not the day to push the envelope, don't push it on that day. Pick it. But most of all, you need to be patient. You need to be patient. You need to ask your questions. You need to keep your goals in mind. And every single day, you need to work towards those. Power is perception. So when you think of power, what's the first word that comes to mind when you think of power? Strength. What else? Progress. Knowledge. Knowledge. Influence. I'm sorry? Influence. influence. Both of you all said influence. Learning. Oh, money. Money, 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 money. 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 Okay. Um, so, but power <laughs> equals, a lot of times, size. Power equals what, how big your office is. What's the size of your staff? Um, how much education do you have? Um, what kind of bonus do you get? What is your salary? Maybe you have a job that has an offense, uh, expense account. Maybe you have clients that you're responsible for. And how are they doing? Are your clients, are they being successful? Um, here in, in the world of academia, are students being successful? Are they completing? Um, so those things matter, that power. This next one says, confidence is beautiful. Um, they say, um, and this is from that book over there, I did not say this, um, play like a man, win like a woman. Um, they say that men often are, are often called forceful occupiers of space, that they know how to come into a room and how to leave a room. And so um, in the book, it talks about how women have to do the same thing. You have to know how to have confidence to speak your peace. You have to, um, they also talk about how sometimes women shrink, shrink to fit a moment and how sometimes we cower down, we lower our voice, um, we change our attitude and we become very unsure of what, we do, what we're doing. And if we really want to play like a man but win like a woman, we have to know how to stand up, to come into the room and ask for what we want and to be forceful sometimes. Um, we have to learn how to sit, learn how to do a handshake, make eye contact, you know, hold your shoulders back, watch your voice. Because sometimes, I mean, I don't do it at work, but at home I get a little whiny. Oh, but that's what I really want. I don't know. You know, but we want to not do that. You want to be able to take command of your space. And when you are in the workspace, you want to be able to speak clearly about what you want. So you have to be able to do that. So, um, number one, you've got to have some professional behavior. What is that? Number one, you've got to have respect when we talk about professional behavior. No matter who it is, you have to have respect. Number two, you have to be on time. Have you ever gone somewhere and the, the, it was supposed to start at 3 o'clock, but it really starts at 3.30, but you've got to leave at 3.30? <laughs> you know, so you want to be on time. So be on time to things. You want to be polite. You want to always say thank you. You want know, to open the door, you know, nice to meet you. Um, you want to be prepared for things. So 
So if something comes up, you want to make sure that you're prepared to make it, make it and be there. And you want to be your own leader, which is why I chose the eagle. When we talk about leadership, a lot of times we talk about eagles. Because eagles, you really see them one at a time. You don't really see them bunched up. They kind of fly out on their own. So kind of be that eagle. Um, let's see, number two, the nevers. Um, never, ever, ever, ever give up. You got to keep going. So you have a hard semester. Some things have happened that didn't really work out the way that you wanted them to, and you really want to quit. Well, I challenge you to really think about that. Is there any way possible for you to continue forward and complete the semester? What I always ask students is, you already paid your money. <laughs> you got money in the bank like that that you could just give it away? And so usually students say no. And I say, well, let's find a way to make it happen so we don't give up. Um, the other thing you want to do in the workplace, you want to never use sex to leverage power. So you want to keep that, keep that off the board. Um, you want to never let your professional life interfere with your personal life. So you don't want, to, I don't think I said that right. You don't want your, prof your personal life to interfere with your professional life. So you want to try to keep them separate. But let's be honest here. Your professional life and your personal life, they often intertwine, and they do kind of come to head sometimes. But that's when maybe you need to have a day off. You need to have a vacation day. You need to take a me day, um, a, a mental, mental health day for me so that you can get away and, and, and kind of do that. And then um, the last never is to never let them see you sweat or cry because it makes a difference. Um, how many times have you seen a man in a work environment cry? <laughs> okay, well, maybe I'll take that back. Um, maybe we have seen that. Um, but it's usually not, it's not the norm. Now, those are things we want, we want to never do. Um, loyalty. Um, we do want to be loyal. Um, but this is not to mean that you're to be a doormat. You want to show loyalty, but you also want to command the respect that you deserve. You want to take care of your own. Um, so you want to be loyal, maybe to the people that you work with, your good friends, your family. Um, you don't want to steal an associate's ideas and say, oh, that, that was my idea. No, you want, to give, you want to give credit where credit is due. Because if you don't, then it'll come back to haunt you. You want to always keep your word. Anybody in here have children? Raise your hands if you have children. Okay, so several people have children. Have you ever told your child that you're going to go to the zoo tomorrow? <laughs> Anybody ever done that? You're going to do something tomorrow, and then tomorrow comes, but your car broke down, <laughs> and you don't really have a way to get there, you don't have any money, but your child is saying, but you said we were going to X, Y, Z. And the very first time that I told my daughters that we were going to do something and I didn't do it, I felt like the smallest thing in the whole entire universe. And I cried and I said, I'm so sorry, but mama promised you as soon as I get some money, we're going to go. And, and they were like, okay. And my husband was like, you know, we ain't going. And I, the mama, I'm like, you just can't tell kids you're just not going. And, um, but that's when I realized that if I'm going to be able to keep my word, I need to say that I can do that or not do that at the very beginning. I don't want to say I can do something and then an hour later say, okay, sorry, I need to keep my word with that. So keep your word. Um, you want to be as, as kind to the person who cleans up in the <laughs> office building um, as you are to your boss. It should be no difference in the type of job a person has to the type of respect or even the interaction that you have with them. It should be the same. And then you want to remember the personal. Handwritten notes are still good, even though email is faster, texting is, I guess, the new deal, or you want to Facebook somebody. Those are good in certain ways, but you still need to be personal. Um, when was the last time, can somebody tell me the last time they received a handwritten note in the mail, a card, an article that was addressed to them a few times? How did that make you feel? Made you feel really special? Is it, uh, did it make you feel different um, from when you just received uh, something, maybe, do you have a Facebook wall, somebody just wrote on your wall?
Right. So um, let's not forget the personal. Because um, a lot of times we get so busy in our day that we don't do the personal. So, and, and we really should. All right, let's keep going. There's danger. Danger in the fact that um, you don't want to be the office wife, mother, daughter, or even mistress. You want to keep the professional in the office. You, um, you don't want to take everything personally. So maybe somebody said something and you internalize it and that they were talking just to you. They may have been talking in generalities. Don't play the victim. And do not play down the contribution that you make. Whatever that contribution is, you need to be proud of that. Now, you don't need to go to the other level where you're really boastful, but you do need to take pride in your own actions. You need to be suited for success in all ways. Um, wear the correct uniform. Um, you want to make sure that you have on, um, you're covered. You wear the proper accessories and shoes. And um, always think about how are you going to be perceived when you walk out of the house. So piercings, um, tattoos, um, the items that you wear or don't wear, you want to be mindful of that. The words that we have have power. So we don't want to do any um, sexist jokes, racist jokes, um, cursing or poor language. Um, you want to have proper grammar. Um, there's nothing that can undo an ill-spoken word. Um, you want to watch the pitch of your voice. And um, like they say, you want to talk like a grown-up. So um, I use the example of my girls. A lot of times they do this text, text speech, even when they're talking. You know, I'm like, no. Do you meet, and then my daughter always says, do you want me to be proper? Yes, I do. I need you to be proper when, when we're talking. But where are women today? So we dominate these particular fields. A registered nurses, school teachers, social workers, event planners, medical service managers, counselors, um, community service managers, and HR managers. We also dominate in the field of psychology, education administrators, advertising, accountants, insurance underwriters, and veterinarians. Hmm, interesting. Some of the issues that we have in place for women today, um, some of the things that we're still looking at after 90 years of the Department of Labor um, is equal pay for equal work. And we, we talked about that at the very beginning. Um, we are still not quite at the rate. Um, I believe today we make 80 cents on the dollar that a man makes. Um, which is higher than it used to be, but it's not 100 for 100. We also need to talk about, and we talked about this earlier, workplace flexibility. Um, we, have work, we have more workplace fl flexibility than we did before, um, but I think a lot of times um, women can get um, pushed back because you know, they may be at childbearing years and they may be going on maternity leave and what would we do if we, they're not there? And I think a lot of times that workplace flexibility is not always there, but we need that. That's an issue that we still need to look for. Um, higher paying jobs for women. When you look at the area of STEM, um, science, technology, engineering, and math, that's a very lucrative area, but we don't have as many women in that workforce area. And then also coming up, we have a lot of green jobs um, with uh, renewable energy, again, where there's really not a lot of women in that area as of yet. And then one of the other issues, which I did not realize until I did research for this, was the issue of women veterans experiencing homelessness. So they say now that there are currently 1.8 million women veterans. And of that, there are nearly 200,000 that are homeless, which is shameful. And we should be shamed for that. Um, but that is one of the things that the Department of Labor actually has on their things that we need to make a change in. So um, the homelessness of women veterans. So a few other things. Networking is number one. We talked earlier, how can women get ahead? We have to network. We have to talk to other people. You have to turn a social engagement into an opportunity. Um, you need to know that networking is a contact sport. You have to talk to somebody <laughs> when you go network. Um, before you leave here today, you should get the name and perhaps an email or an office or some place of somebody else in this room that may can help you reach your goals. Um, this is a statue of fortitude. Um, it really symbolizes um, strength, courage, hope, and wisdom. 
Um, the upstretched hand is reaching forward, um, making a move, and the lower hand is pulling people up. Um, the legs are going forward, meaning there's always progressive or forward movement. Uh, we have to reach back and help someone else. If you have reached an area where you are successful and you, knew, you know the professor where you were very good in that class and you know how that professor works, you need to share that with someone else. So I always think about the statue fortitude where you're going forward, but as you are trying to reach something new, you're also bringing somebody up with you. And um, my very last, don't hate the player, hate the game. So when we think about winning, you, that little girl is so cute, um, you have to realize that laughter is the cure to all and it changes the atmosphere. So um, can you guys indulge me just one second? Everybody, don't look at the person next to you and I want you really just to laugh. Laugh. <laughs> It totally changes the atmosphere. And laughter can change how you feel about something. So be free. And I laugh all the time. And I do a big laugh. And I'll be real with it. So um, you need to realize, Mary Ann Williamson said, your playing small does not serve the world. So play big. Um, set some goals. Be yourself. Don't be fake. Always be yourself. And um, Linda Joy says, your past does not define your future, your actions and beliefs do. Your past does not define your future, your actions and your beliefs do. And lastly, Sophia Nelson said, your purpose in life cannot be altered unless you allow other people or things to control you. So whatever you want to be in life, whatever you want to do, it's totally up to you. Because your purpose in life cannot be altered unless you allow people or things to control you. So thank you for your time. Um, are there any questions? No, because I just covered everything so well, you have no questions. When uh, you were giving the examples from film, back to class I had years ago that talked about how movies, television, advertising, that they're filmed from a, a male perspective. I think it was called the, the male gaze. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts on, you know, today, I mean, there's a lot of very successful uh, women in film as directors, you know, actresses and all that, but if you had any thoughts on, on whether you think that today, film, television, advertising, I believe that media today has a male, totally has a male slant. Um, you look at magazine covers, you look at commercials, um, you look at um, the way that women are dressed in movies and commercials. Um, it's really not what a real woman is. Um, I think if we have more female directors um, and film stars that really spoke to this is what a real woman is, things, things would be totally, it would be different. I think it's unfortunate because a lot of our young children are seeing this and this is the view that they have and they're, they're growing up under false pretenses. So. Instead 
to me like being who they are. Mm -hmm. So I understand. And that, I think if we go back to this area, where if you keep this in your mind, where even if you get to a different level, you always have to remember that you have to take time to explain something to someone else who doesn't know. And you have to bring them up while you're still moving forward. And where we as women have not moved as fast as men is we don't mentor other women like men mentor men. And so I think that, I mean, everybody in here can mentor someone. Um, and everybody in here should be mentoring someone. And maybe that person isn't exactly like you. Maybe they're not in the same field that you're in. But there is some way that you can mentor and explain how to do something in a better way to someone else. So um, again, I think that comes with a collaboration, mentoring, um, that type of thing. I think that's definitely for women right now because it's a cutthroat world. But you know, it's room at the top for everybody. There is. And so, you know, we, we shouldn't be like crabs in a barrel pulling people down. We do have to get past that. It is. And it's, it's disgusting, but it's, that's where so, we're at now. But each one to each one. We can all take what we have from here and share it with someone else. Did you have something? Um, my definition of a feminist is someone who looks for the advancement of women. I mean, it's simple. Feminists can be anyone, not just a woman. Anybody who really is actively working for the advancement of women in all areas. I would add to that maybe and say that it's also someone who looks at literature, at history, at film, at daily events in a way that reflects or impacts women as well. It's a complicated, I mean, yeah. it's an easy definition. It is, it's so very complicated. In that it, it's an attitude because the dominant culture has for so long been the, the image that we see of women. And so if we don't take a new look at some things and look at it from how it, it reflects women, we miss something. We do. Any other questions or comments? Well, I thank you guys for your time. <laughs>